Well, good morning everyone, or afternoon, or evening. This is M's Art at Home YouTube, Keith Inspired Artwork, Keith Herring. So I have spent the last hour outside my house having fun on my footpath doing this Keith Herring inspired artwork just to cheer up my neighbourhood. So much fun. That guy's legs go up my fence. <laughs> so much fun. I got these chalks at Office Works. They're only like $13. And it was an only an hour click and collect. So I can recommend them. I'll show you those in a minute. I've already had people come past and comment how much they loved it. But that's what it's all about, isn't it? I'll just show you what these chalks are. Fun, fun, fun. This dog here is barking back at Napoleon because Napoleon's a yapper. So these are the chalks that I used. Lots of fun. I look forward to seeing your footpaths and your Keith Haring inspired work. Hope you have a fabulous week. Bye. Who is Keith Haring? I step into Keith Haring's world of doodles, which is, you know, the quick drawings, and be inspired by his awesome artwork. Keith Haring was born in 1958 in Pennsylvania, USA. He loved drawing cartoons and visiting museums. Here, he is travelling on the subway. So in the 1980s, especially the early 80s, so much of the graffiti art movement was in the New York subways. Have a look here. They had trouble keeping the illegal artwork out of trains. If you see in the background, this is one of Keith's artworks here, and that's him sitting there. Keith Haring is known for colourful cartoon artworks and certain characters such as crawling babies, barking dogs and spaceships. Very simple but fun. When he was 20 years old, he moved to New York City. Keith Haring had relationships with men and was part of the LGBTQ community in New York. In the 1980s, New York was a very exciting place and there were many artists working in the same neighbourhood as Haring, such as Andy Warhol, who was so famous, and Jean, and Jean Michael Basic. Look how fun that is. How crazy. Keith Haring was inspired by graffiti artists. He drew hundreds of drawings on the New York subway. He used chalk to make his art, like this image below, still alive in 85. Look at this, a head exploding, just all sorts of cool thoughts. People walked past his art every day. Imagine walking past artworks on your way to school. He got in trouble sometimes for drawing on the subway, but many people loved his art. He carried on drawing because he wanted everyone to experience art. Keith Haring started becoming famous and had exhibitions in galleries. When the paintings were sold, he often gave the money to children's charities. What a good man. Haring painted art with and for kids. He made murals in lots of children's hospitals and schools. He even painted a massive artwork of the Statue of Liberty with over a thousand kids. He often listened to hip hop music. Break dancers used his pavement drawings as a surface for their performances. Do you think these figures are dancing to hip hop? Sure thing. Keith Haring's art became expensive to buy. However, he wanted everyone to be able to buy his work. He opened a new shop called The Pop Shop to sell his art on badges, posters, games and t-shirts. In 1988, Herring became very sick with a disease called AIDS. Herring kept on drawing and he even made posters to tell people about the sickness. Before he died, Herring set up the Keith Herring Foundation to fund AIDS research and help kids who were in need. Keith Herring wanted everyone to make art. Have you ever drawn on the pavement with chalk? 
Have you tried drawing your own dancing characters? Here, have a go. Wow, what an artist. Loves his work. Part of the fun fact is that we actually don't know who he is. He doesn't need to be seen to be successful. Banksy is one of the most prized guerrilla graffiti artists, political activists in the world. In 1999, his first known mural was discovered in Bristol. He started using stencils. After hiding from police to be more efficient, the message behind his work is fiercely anti-war, anti-capitalist, anti-establishment. To the political representative, he's very important for a lot of artists. He uses subjects like rats, apes, policemen, soldiers, children, the elderly. Despite his fame, Banksy has never revealed his true identity. Around 2000, his work started to appear around London. Damage to the trains means disruption to the wider London and to all of us. In 2005, he travelled to the West Bank and created eight new pieces. His art could be found on the streets, on buildings, in public spaces. So it was easily painted over or destroyed. Like in 2007, when Transport London painted over, Banksy was nominated for an Academy Award for Best Documentary feature for his 2010 world, art world that are exit through the gift shop. There's a French guy, his cousin, we all know the best wall, who knows all the best walls in LA. People are fighting to keep his artwork alive. It's sad to see that it's gone, he says. He has held exhibitions, New York, LA, London, Sydney. Some of his works have been sold for hundreds of thousands of dollars. In 2008, his stunt with the girl in the balloon, it self-destructed after being sold for $1.4 million. In 2009, devoted to Parliament, featuring a chimpanzee in Britain's House of Commons, was sold for $12.1 million. He's sure he knows where his political beliefs stand. Incredibly complex ideas into one single image. Do you think his, the mystery of him will ever be revealed? This guy asks the interviewer, oh, does that mean you're him? What a fabulous little movie on an unknown and one of the world's most famous artists, Banksy.